Sean Payton's call sheet was shown clearly. You could see two-minute offense, red zone offense, all the play calls. Monday night, you got to look at Mike McCarthy's play sheet with a close up yeah. and his wasn't the big card. It there was no. like it was like there was there was you could see there was a uh, what's a spiral a ring, there a spiral that, so ring flipping right. around. Yeah, yeah ring. Yeah, so right. yeah. Does that does that matter? Sean Payton downplayed it yesterday that they showed that. Does that really matter if you know the names of the plays and the groupings of the plays for that game because it changes game to game and everybody's got names of their plays. Does that really matter? That, that, that that's out there for somebody to study, like the Packers this week can study that as they get ready to play the Broncos. No, they're, they're going to see those things on film anyways and have an idea of things they like to do in the red zone in a general way, right? And then, you know, let's just say he had 20 red zone plays on that sheet last week. You know, this week, you know, yeah, there might be five, eight carryover ones, but there's another going to be another 10, 12, 15 that are they're new to the week, right? And – in real time, it's not like, you know, in real time, there's nothing to be gained advantage of. And it, it's hard to really think that there's an advantage that, like, the Packers could could gleam on and glean on and anything as far as looking at that anyways. You know, you got an idea through film study and all that. You're not like, wait, what's that other – what's play four say just so we can be prepared for that, right? You know, there's, there's, there's rules and things that are set on the defensive side of the ball, and they know how – you know, for the most part, Denver wants to attack. And, of course, there's going to be some things in there that are going to be more specific, you know, just to the Green Bay Packers this week, where last week it was, you know, more specific to exactly what the Kansas City Chiefs there. But, uh, yeah, it's an impressive play sheet. I, I, I do look at that like, you know, his play sheet is pretty tightly packed in there with a lot of fail-safe plans and a lot tinier, tinier writing then it seemed like uh, Mike McCarthy's. Uh, I will say that. Now, Mike McCarthy, I know, had a few pages there, the, the, the look around, but I always am intrigued by the look of these. This is more what I am accustomed to. This is more of a John, Gray, John Gruden type of play sheet that we had. Now, the cool thing, and what I think, and leave this up here, well, it's just like the one thing you got to be a little careful about with stuff like this is, is there any code words there to be gained, right? That would be the one thing that I would be a little worried about. And I think I feel like some of those things might say some of the code words. Like if you look on the left screen there, there's, you know, there's all state and read and bingo and quail and Google. And uh, those are things where, listen, if you were Bill Belichick, he'd look to go, wait, what is, uh, let me hear them say Google. Did anybody see a Google? Somebody go back and listen to the game. You know, was there anybody that said Google the week before it and a code word or whatever so they can place that together? That would be a little bit where I'd be worried about it to a degree. Uh, but still, that's hard to piece all that stuff together. Uh, it's an impressive play sheet nonetheless. As Pete points out, the referee's name is at the top oh, yeah. of the sheet. It right. kind of it kind of reminds me of, you know, if you go to a concert and you have binoculars, if you're sitting in crappy seats and you got a view of the stage, you will see on the floor of the stage the name of the city that the band is in. So they don't remember yeah. to say, hey, Pittsburgh. Hello, Pittsburgh. Yeah, right. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah. So that's the just the reminder. When you're upset with something, Sean, 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 Sean. We always uh, had it. We had the list of all the referees on our play sheets, right? We did. You know, Gruden, that was something he did. So we knew on the play sheet, on the bottom right corner of the back side of it, I, I think we had all the referees, the line judge, everybody involved to, with, with their full name. And I think, of course, that was for him so he could mother F them appropriately when the time, the time came. <laughs> So you could use the first name as you utter the profanity. And speaking of profanity, that was my idea. Inspired by the fact that when guys like Peyton Manning were mic'd up for games and didn't want to be, the threat was, I'm just going to make all my Omaha. Instead of Omaha, I'm going to use inappropriate language. Then good luck. Good luck well, using broadcasting right. the things I say. Why not just put on the call sheet profanity? I'm not going to use any of the profanity I suggested on Twitter here. Because it's not as fun when you plan it. It's more fun when it blurts out. But why not just put in big letters an F bomb? <laughs> then you know, camera's not going to lock onto it then, baby. Well, I can so, remember a few times like Gruden, <laughs> like looking at it and going, like, 
hey, Sean. And then going, wait, I mean, hey, F and John. What are they, you know, like he knew, he had to read down, look at the, you know, uh, wait, I said the wrong guy's name and doing that. So it, it does, it is helpful. And, and with the, the number of the guy on there too. So you really could, you know. You missed my point. Uh, you missed my point. Put the profanity on there so they wouldn't take the shot of it. Yeah, yeah. So I when got, you hold oh, it up, I got you, if it got says F-K-Y-O-U in yeah. big letters across the top, <laughs> they're probably not going to run with that camera right. when right. they're calling up the shots in the truck. <laughs> You're That's right. a good way to do it. Uh -huh. And, you know, the other reason that we see these things is because <laughs> they're, trying to, they're trying to block their, their mouth. Right. Because they don't want people reading their lips. And my son said to me the other night when they showed Mike McCarthy with the call sheet, like, like, wh why do they care if, like, they're showing what the plays are. How in the world is anybody figuring out in real time what he's saying and transmitting it to somebody? Like, why are they so obsessed with cover? Okay. <laughs> Mike McCarthy's call sheet is not quite as detailed, at least not as it relates to them. Okay, that's, that'll, that, that will be fine. Um, I act like I disapprove. I sent it to Pete. But anyway, why are they covering their mouth? Why don't they want people to read their lips, Chris? It's over, overthinking it a little bit, paranoia, all of it. In real time, you're right. You know, there, there's nothing that's going to be done. It's not going to be like, you know, you read Mike McCarthy's lips. Somebody in the upstairs box is like, hey, he said 73Z bingo. Hey, guys, get ready. Hey, get it down to the players. It's 73Z bingo. And then, like, what, that, that's only going to confuse people and do things. I think it's yeah. really more for the next week's opponent. That's really where, you know, it's a little bit like, let me not have too many times where you could see the play call and they might be able to piece something together. But more times than not, it's way too over analyzing the situation and going way too deep into the situation. Uh, you're right. It's not going to be used. Uh, the only thing that I think that gets really used against players and coaches and offenses, especially is the code words at the line of scrimmage, right? And the hand signals. Those are things that people will certainly look at and try to break down and see if they can't figure something out through that. The sideline stuff. I never heard anything that was like, oh, we read his lips and we pieced it together, right? I can remember in New England on a Saturday, you know, though, like we're not, we're, we're, the buses are outside, they're ready to leave and we're waiting and it's because like Bill's got somebody, Belichick's got somebody in there. Wait, I remember a game and, you know, three years ago where the mic was on and we could hear checks and maybe that's where, you know, there's something to figure out. But, you know, as far as reading the lips and all that, yeah, I think that's a little overplayed. Is part of it, because I was trying to understand why they would be so concerned about, you know, giving up the secrets on their play sheet so the secrets coming out of the way they're moving their mouths are protected. Like it's, you're making a value judgment here. I'll show you my play sheet because I don't want you to see my mouth. Is it possible that maybe some of the communication other than the play call they don't want people to see, that like, you know, calm too. down or, they, you know, uh, you maybe, know, here, maybe you're doing word. it again. You're doing it again. You know, like, come on, man, you got to calm down. We've been through this, you know, just things that would show a little bit more about the relationship between the play caller and the quarterback. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think there's some of that uh, probably too, like uh, just being careful, over careful about all of it. But usually even in those instances, right. You know, you have to have a rare psycho every now and then. Again, I'll go back to John Gruden. He might have been like, hey, what the F are you looking at there? And then it'd go back to, okay, next play, right? But, like, but for the most part, in those situations, even when the quarterback's not doing good or whatever else, it's positive because you're not trying to get in your own quarterback's head during the middle of a football game, right? So, you know, for a lot of these guys, the quarterback could have missed like seven completions in a row and had a, you know, interception and whatever else, and they're still staying positive and trying to put positive vibes and messages in his brain. So, like, even that, I think, is few and far between in, in that conversation. I really think it's just a paranoid, conservative group. It's become a thing a little bit, and it's almost like, like you know, habit forming as far as what these coaches and play callers do now. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.